So I'm not exactly sure where I'm going with this video today. Um, I've just been tinkering around with these two ESP32 base boards just to get my feet wet a little bit and prove to myself that I can actually talk to them and send them some code and stuff. So let me just show you quickly what I've been doing. So this isn't this isn't a tutorial. This is just I figured I'd uh, fire up the camera since I've got these sort of working a little bit at least to my level of competency with coding them. But uh, yeah, let me show you what's going on with these things. So first of all, this is the ESP32 cam. It has an ESP32 module on the bottom here, which is the RF and the processor. You can see the little antenna there and an external antenna port. Um, and then on top, we have a camera, which is why it's called the ESP32 cam. And it's also got a micro SD slot there for, I guess, when you're in camera mode for putting uh, your pictures on and stuff. Although you can read and write to it, you can put whatever you want on it. So the uh, this one I've got programmed with just a little Arduino Blink Sketch, the standard Blink Sketch, except for it's got a big ass bright LED which is intended to be used as a camera flash. I'm going to shut that back off again. And that is literally just the standard Arduino Blink Sketch. The only modification I've done is to tell it which pin that uh, LED is on, which took a little bit of looking up, but I ended up just finding the schematic for the board and uh, looking up where the uh, where the LED and its drive transistor there is connected. So maybe I should even back up further. Um, the ESP32 board, it's the big brother of the ESP8266 family. You know, these guys, which we are somewhat familiar with, uh, where's, there's the actual ESP8266 uh, that we know and love. There's, here's one on a full-size D1. Here's the ESP01, which only has a couple of IPIO ports, but that's handy for some things too. Um, there's a low-end version. You know, there's those things are all over the place, and they're cheap. And they're perfectly functional for a bunch of stuff. But the ESP32 just has more processing in it. It's got Bluetooth in it, in addition to the Wi-Fi, which uh, I haven't played with yet. Uh, there's a lot of it. There's like 90% of these things. They've just barely scratched the surface. Um, and it's it's a dual core processor. It's 32-bit processor. And it's capable, instead of doing things like streaming video, which is fairly intense. So, uh, the easiest way for most of us beginner types to talk to these things, to program them, is using the Arduino IDE. Um, some of the boards have a USB connection on them for programming. Some don't. This one doesn't. So I'm just using uh, this FTDI module. Apparently you can also use the CH340s, which I'm more comfortable with. But uh, it, uh, what I've read is it works better with the FTDI. So because I didn't need the hassle, I just went with that. So just like any new board in the Arduino world, um, you have to put the board definitions into it first. So a bit of simple Googling comes up with this JSON string which you paste in here with all the other ones. Just like all the other types of boards you've had to add to Arduino over the years. And then you select your board from the board manager. And when you add ESP32, there's a whole bunch of different ESP32s show up. Tons and tons of them. Including the ESP32 cam which I've already got selected. And then here is the blink sketch. The only difference is that I've changed it from saying uh, LED built in. I've changed it to uh, pin four, which is where that uh, big LED is. And then you just upload this exactly the same as you would with any other Arduino sketch. So that's pretty straightforward and good for us beginnery types. Now then, there's this uh, OMX EV, or ESP32 EVB that another maker sent me uh, a few months back and I've just finally gotten around to playing with it. It's a neat little board and as you can see right now, and you can probably hear too, 
I've just got a sketch in there. Well, not a sketch. I've got a program in there that's just toggling these two relays on here and the LEDs that are associated with them. So I'm just going to reset this board and stop that happening because the clicking's annoying me. So this board, it's an evaluation board, EVB. It's basically uh, their way of showing all the different possible things that you can do with this little ESP chip. So it's got a hardwired ethernet port on it. It's got a couple of relays. So there's the tracks for the relays. They got pretty good separation from everything else, which is nice. It's got a connector here for CAN bus. Yet another protocol that I haven't played with. And some little dri a little driver there for it, a little amplifier or something. Um, this being open source hardware, the schematic for this is available. And we'll go and take a look at that in a minute or two. Uh, we've got a barrel jack for 5 volts DC in. We have a connection for a lithium ion battery and there's a charge management uh, circuitry on there. This whole board can run off that, uh, but some of the things, some of the functions don't work. If you've only got 3.9 or four volts, it wants the full five volts. So there's a bit of a caveat there. There's the USB input here and there is a CH340 right there. I need a better pointer. Yeah, there's the CH340 and it's a little 12 meg crystal. Um, that is a programming port, uh, Mozzie and Miso and, uh, and the clock and all the stuff that goes with that is on there. This is all of the GPIO that this guy provides broken out. However, on this board, because there's all these other things going on, very few of those are left over to be used for general purpose on this particular board. There's a couple of them, but most of them are also doubling for other things. So that might get in the way of what you're, what you're doing. Um, we have an infrared transmit and receive over here. We have an SD card slot. We've got a reset button and just a general button that goes to one of the GPIOs. Then there is the ESP32 itself. And on the back, all the GPIO is nicely labeled there so that it uh, makes it handy when you're messing with this thing. A big warning over here, five volts only on the barrel jack. So being an ESP32, just like the brains underneath this one, um, you can do any sort of uh, programming you want. You could program this thing from the Arduino IDE, but part of my tinkering and experimenting today has been to try, just to stretch myself a little bit, to try MicroPython. Uh, Python is just another programming language. Um, it's not a compiled language. It's not quite as fast. It's still damn fast, but it's not quite as fast as compiled C or something else. But uh, the benefit of it, or one of the benefits, is you can just type commands directly into it on the serial port and have them run instantly. I'm not going to go deep into this. This actually does have quite a bit of uh, information out there on the internet. Unexpected Maker's got a video series on the basics of uh, using MicroPython on the ESP32. I'll put a link to that somewhere if you want to check that out. But this is the official MicroPython website. And this is the quick start guide. It goes through all the different commands to load it in. And it... Even as useless as I am at code and software and stuff, this just worked first try. Um, the only thing I had to change was I downloaded a slightly more modern version. Mine's got a 2019 date code on it, but it worked exactly the same. I just had to change that part right there. And there's also a pretty good reference for uh, getting started on the various different uh, controls and software and whatnot. Again, this isn't a tutorial. Um, follow along here if you want. It's, it's relatively straightforward. And again, I say that as an old hardware guy who sucks at software. So here I'm just connected. I've just got a serial terminal program running connected to the serial port that this thing happens to be using, which is a virtual USB serial port at 11.5200 8N1, which is the default that it mentions on the MicroPython page. And from here... I can either start, uh, I've, I've got a command line in the thing, just like a command line in any operating system. 
You can just enter commands directly there. And then I can turn those pins, take control of any of the digital I.O. just like this. So I've defined uh, a P0 variable as, uh, as being pin 32, which is one of the relays, and I defined it as an out. So now if I just do a... There's on, there's off. You can see it happening and hear it, I think. So that makes it easy for you to test out bits of code and stuff that you're messing with. Uh, it has a full file system on it. Uh, again, I don't fully understand these commands. I'm mostly just uh, following the magic footsteps from other people right now. But uh, a lot of this, this import stuff is basically the same as just declaring the includes at the top of an Arduino sketch. And then here's just like in the setup, defining the pins and what you want them to do and giving, giving them a, an easier to use name. So there's the file system on this one. Uh, when you first install it, all there is there is the boot Python, which is just a startup script. You can replace that, you can add to it, uh, but it's right now basically pretty much empty. Uh, I have just, while I'm experimenting here, I've created a folder called library just to play with it. Um, and then I've got these two programs here that I've created, which are these. I just wrote them in a text editor on my computer, dropped them onto my hard drive of my computer, and then used a command or actually a program called Ampy, which we have to thank Adafruit for. And it's just a command line program that lets you upload uh, software to the board, um, upload files rather to the board. So this is the blink. This is the one that I was starting, that I started off with. Uh, I've just defined the two relays and their LEDs as uh, LED and LED one, just because I was too lazy to change it that much from something I found online and I start with one of them off and one of them on and then this little loop thing here this while loop um ter or inverts them basically it takes the existing LED value and does a logical knot on it and then writes it back to itself and then it goes to sleep for half a second and again you've got the two imports up there Looks like, uh, as I understand this anyway, you don't have to import the whole library. You can just import a function from the library if you only need that one function just to save yourself some space, which is rather clever. So this one here, to run it, now that it's already, since I've got it loaded on here, all I have to do is import it. And it starts running. And because it's got a loop and there's nothing to break out of the loop, It'll just keep doing that forever until I hit a control C and break it. Um, or I could hit the restart on the board too. The other one that I've got, the other file that I got, and again, this is 99% straight out of the, uh, out of the examples on the MicroPython website is this one, which sets the board up on my Wi-Fi. And normally between here, there would be a password, but right now, just for, because of something else I'm working on, I've got my, uh, my workshop, uh, Wi-Fi with no password. Yes, that's insecure, but it gets shut off every time I walk out of the room with the master switch for my workshop that also turns off this computer and soldering irons and the lights and any janky crap that I'm working on. So it's only on very, very infrequently. Anyway, this is that, uh, that command line utility that Adafruit uh, provided that, uh, that uploads files to the file system on the ESP32. Uh, Ampy, you tell it what port it is. In this case, it's TTY USB 0. Uh, if you were on Windows, it would be COM something. If you're on Mac, who the hell knows, you're on your own. And then just put and then the file name you can also specify what subdirectory on the file system to put it on you can put a file path in here if you want so i i could uh upload it as a different name 
if I wanted to. And there it's done. Now let me just restart my serial terminal. And there you see the file that I just uploaded is there. And it's just exactly the same as Wi-Fi Connect. But if I import it... So there we go. It's jumping onto my Wi-Fi. Um, it's using the default MAC address because I didn't set one. I could have in those commands. All the rest of this good stuff, whatever. And there is the IP address that my router assigned to it. And the gateway and all the rest of that. And there it is. So that's kind of cool. And I can I can start that back up. And this is still functional. So I can now that I've got the uh, so now that I've got the uh, one script running and the the Wi-Fi is connected, I can run other things if I choose to. Let's kill that off. So that's kind of neat. And that's in a couple of days of tinkering around. That's sort of where I've gotten myself to on this. It's uh, it may not be impressive to, to some people, especially people who live in the world of code, but this is my reality. I'm a hardware guy and I'm pretty impressed with myself that I can make this hardware get up and dance at least a little bit. So I think I'm going to leave it there for now. Um, there's obviously a lot more that I could be doing with these, but this is just me getting my feet wet right now. Um, I'm going to leave links to a few different resources and things that I found in my travels uh, down in the description. And I think probably the next time I pull these boards out, I'll likely be playing with the camera module on there just to see if I can get it working. Um, it should be fairly straightforward with that Arduino uh, script that's there, but we'll find out. And this guy, if anybody's got any experience on this thing, um, and especially getting the Ethernet, the physical Ethernet port working on, uh, in, in MicroPython would be cool, but uh, in anything, I know another maker has played with it a little bit and he's got it working. Um, he's got some sample code, but it interfaces with uh, an MQTT server, which is... You know, beyond where I want to be right now, it's a whole nother world that I don't, that you know, maybe someday, but not right now. Um, but I'm, I just, you know, want to play with this thing a little bit further in the future. It's designed as an experimenter board or as a dev board. And that's exactly what I'm going to do with it as time and my interest permits. Anyway, um, thanks for watching. Uh, I'm impressed that any of you made it this far, quite honestly. Um, if you have any comments or questions, uh, by all means, down below, as always, talk to you later. Oh, I bet some of you are wondering what that is. It is Grandpa's Sweater Oatmeal Stout from Barnhammer Brewing in Winnipeg. It is a very nice Irish-style stout, not as heavy as, as uh, Guinness, but uh, quite nice and refreshing.